Hey, art nerds! Not too long ago, I ran a live alcohol marker workshop here on YouTube where I showed you guys how to use different alcohol markers to draw and render this really cute frog. Here is the reference image that we're going to be using today. Today, we're going to be first drawing our frog, then inking our frog, and then finally using markers to color our frog. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's get started with the drawing and inking stage. So for this tutorial, you're going to need some mixed media or Bristol paper. You're going to need a mechanical pencil and you're going to need something to ink with. I'm using the Sakura Pigma FB since it's alcohol marker proof. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch the basic shape of our frog from reference. So I drew this kind of oblong shape in and I added a line of action. Now I'm going to break that oblong shape down into smaller shapes. So we have a hexagonal shape for the head. We have a round ball like shape for his throat. Then I drew a crosshair or I drew kind of a bow shape across to help me place his little froggy forelimbs, his little froggy arms, and now we're sketching in his little froggy legs. And I have a tutorial on how to break down animals from reference that you guys will probably enjoy. I'll link that down in the description below. So here is our basic placement sketch. Now it's time to start refining some details. So I'm working really closely with our reference photo and I'll have a link down in the description below to where the original reference came from. So now I'm just kind of figuring out all the details like where to place the nostrils, how to draw the mouth. And when you're drawing from reference like this, you want to pay really close attention to what you actually see, not what you think you see. And this is one of those things where practice really does help you perfect what you're doing. This is actually the third frog I've drawn and I have step-by-step -step drawing videos for the other two coming up, but he's also the best of the three. So the more you do this, the more you practice practice, the better you're going to get. Now, if you're just interested in using alcohol markers and getting better at using alcohol markers, I have a printable line art of the finished inks that you guys can download off of Gumroad, or if you're an art nerd, you get it for free. So what I basically do is I sketch in all the major forms loosely first, just to help me place them. Like for his little forelimbs, his little forehands, I guess, forefeet, um, I sketched in these oblong shapes and now I'm breaking them down, working really closely from the reference into the individual fingers, I guess, and toe pads. And I'm doing that for the back legs as well. So now we have our finished froggy sketch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to ink it. And if you'd like an art workshop, join me on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. CST for live drawing and art workshops every week. So next we're going to be inking this with the Sakura Pigma FB. This is a waterproof and alcohol marker safe brush pin from Sakura of America. What I really like about this brush pin is it's a brush pin. So as you bear down with the brush pin, you're going to get heavier line weights. And I have lots of inking tutorials here on this channel if you're interested in learning more about how to use brush pins for your art. And I'm just kind of taking it very slow here, uh, kind of working from foreground to background. And I'm starting on the frog's face, and then I'm going to move on to the rest of the frog. And the reason I'm starting on the face is the same reason I start on the face when I'm drawing people. If you mess up on the face, that's the area that people's eyes focus on first. That's the area we're most likely to look for differences or inaccuracies, since that's how we tell one person from another person. And this even holds true for animals. So if I nail the face, which is the most important part, then it's going to look more like a frog. It's going to look like it's supposed to look. Thank you. 
So with inking, it's important that you take your time and you move at a pace that you're comfortable with. I've been inking for a really long time now, over 20 years. So I'm a little bit faster than you might be, but you should really just aspire to work at the level you're comfortable working at. And you guys can see I'm rotating the paper as I go. This allows me to get the best angle for my wrist because when you're inking, you want to pull from your shoulder and your elbow rather than letting your wrist or even your fingers do all the work. So the more of your arm you can use when you're inking, the smoother and cleaner your lines are going to be. And generally, whenever possible, I try to pull my lines all in one go. So like for his little forelegs there, I try to get each side of the forelimb in one pull. You can always go back and add more line weight to it, but you want to try and get the initial line in one pull. So we're just about finished with our inks. I'm going to allow this to cure to dry out for 24 hours. That lets the pigment bond to the paper. Then I'm going to erase our pencil. Then I'll scan it so my wonderful art nerds have a copy they can work from. And then we'll get to markering it. So here is our frog reference again. During the live stream, I had the frog reference not only up in the stream for people to work along with, but up on my computer screen so I could see it. And what I'm not showing here is during the live stream, I selected some colors and I kind of explained my thought process. I answered people's questions about alcohol markers. So what I'm starting with is the background. And I'm not trying to recreate the background perfectly, but I really liked what the dark gray did for the frog. It really made the frog seem to pop out from the paper. So I'm creating kind of a halo using C6, a cool gray. And uh, this... This marker is actually starting to run dry, so I had to switch it out about halfway through. So generally, if a marker was running dry like this, I would try to refill it, but I don't have any refills of C6, and Copic refills are not considered a necessity, so it's going to have to wait a little while. And that grousey bow cat you hear in the background would like to, me to remind you guys that if you enjoy my tutorials, if you enjoy my live art workshops, one of the ways you can help make that possible is by joining me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. Not only does your financial support allow me to continue to make this kind of content that's accessible to anyone with an internet connection, but it also grants you access to early access access to videos. It get, grants you backer exclusives like free line arts that you can use during our workshops. And it also grants you access to my class catalog. So what that means is when I'm making classes that I teach in person, I create resources. I create templates. I create handouts. I create, sorry, the cat wants to get a bird and he's going to tear my blinds down. I create presentations. I write up a lot of stuff for my students. And if you join me on Patreon, you get access not only to all of my making comics and zines class material. So that is a six-week class that I taught three three times, so I have a lot of materials there. 
you get access to my advanced, or no, I'm sorry, intermediate making comics materials, as well as the alcohol marker and watercolor classes that I teach through Plaza and through various libraries. So, um, sorry, I am super distracted by this cat who's about to knock over a lamp, so I'll go take care of that now. Woo, sorry about that. Normally he likes being in here when I'm recording voiceovers, but he saw a bird and he really wanted to get that bird. So um, I'm creating a halo around the frog using C7 now to create some darker color. What we're aiming to do is we're aiming to layer the color and to create a gradation from dark to lighter. So now I'm going in with C8. And I'm using that to continue our halo effect. I'm also using that to kind of work in those fine details. So what I'm doing is I'm starting heavy at the frog and then lightening up my brush strokes as we move away from the frog. And I'm using Canson Bristol paper for this, Canson XL Bristol for this. And it's thirstier than the Strathmore Bristols and the Strathmore mixed media papers that I'm used to. So it's definitely one of those papers that has a good tendency to run your markers dry. So you may wanna avoid this paper for marker use. And I'm just going to work my way around the frog with this technique. Now I'm going in with what looks like C10. So basically what we did is we went from a medium cool gray to a really dark cool gray. And we shorten our strokes with each pass and we're trying to work as cleanly as possible. So once we finish applying our cool gray, you're going, to get a, you're going to want to get a spritzer bottle with some rubbing alcohol in it. So I have a tiny little spritzer bottle here. And something I notice with spritzer bottles is that if you are really, really slow with how you depress the spray mechanism, it's going to just drip everywhere, which is something I wanted for this because what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to use that rubbing alcohol to kind of break up those brush strokes a little bit. It's going to add kind of a white noise pattern pattern and that's going to make it feel it's going to be less distracting to the viewer. So I'm using a blender marker just to push some of that marker back so it's not encroaching into our little frog friend. And next we're going to get started by coloring in the cream part on his throat. But before we do that, I went ahead and I grabbed a really, really dark 
cool marker and I'm using that just to add in some shadow underneath the frog and kind of around the sides of the frog. This is going to help give the impression that light is hitting the frog. So I fibbed a little bit about adding cream to the throat first. We're actually going to start with the eyes, but something I want to talk about right now is you guys have probably noticed there's a lot of different alcohol markers on our work surface. We have some Blick Studio brush markers, we have some Copic markers, we have some Prismacolor markers, there's some Shinhan markers that you can't see. We even have some Windsor and Newton brush markers. And the thing about me and alcohol markers is I am not really brand specific. Unless I'm getting paid to do like a Copic marker workshop, I use whatever brands offer the colors that I like and have a brush that I like. I've reviewed a lot of different alcohol markers over on the blog and here on the channel over the years and I'll link my alcohol marker reviews for you guys for those of you who are interested in getting into markers and you want to start with something that might be more economical. And while I really like Copic, I also really like Blick Studio brush markers and Prismacolor markers. I like that the Blick Studio brush markers like the one I'm using now to apply the golden color to his eyes so we started with a lighter gold and now we're using an antique color and then fig color to build up that kind of golden color around the edges of his eyes but I really like that they're the Blick Studio brush markers are refillable and they have a brush very similar to the Copic and they're less than half the price so I'm not really brand specific when I'm using alcohol markers and honestly I recommend that you shouldn't be either get the best markers for you at the best price so I'm using one of the Neo Pico color markers to add kind of a cream color to the stomach and the undersides of the frog. And since I'm not really brand specific, I don't, I'm going to move away from mentioning the color names that we're using because those are going to change brand to brand. And we're really going to talk more about why I'm picking what colors I'm picking. So for this frog, if you guys remember the reference, his stomach, his throat, his stomach is kind of a white cr and cream color with a cast shadow on it. His throat is more of a darker cream color with some yellow and even some green kind of seeping into his throat. So when I was selecting the colors I'm selecting, it, I was looking for those kind of qualities and I wanted to build up to that color. So I'm using the white of the paper and I use the colorless blender to kind of push some of that cream color that we applied from the Neo Pico brand back on the paper to kind of soften the transition and to kind of blend it. And that's my over blending technique. So for the eyes, I used Blick Warm Black because it's really a nice, rich, dark brown rather than a black. And it's a really great color to use to kind of build up to black. So we get that color depth. And then I applied Copic Black on top of that. So we end up with these eyes. It's hard to see in the video, but you guys will see when I show the finished piece again. We end up with these eyes that are not just like dead eyes we have extra color going on in them and now I'm going in with another creamy sort of skin tone color it's more of a yellow influence color so that's something that I was looking for when I was picking out these sort of cream and skin tone colors is I was looking for creams that were more yellow influenced because that's what I saw when I looked at our reference image Thank you. 
So now I'm using a really, really light yellow green. It's almost like a chartreuse or even like a highlighter kind of color to add a base color to our frog. So when I use alcohol markers, I do a lot, a lot of layers and it's because I'm trying to build up color depth the way you would with watercolor. And I wanna get a lot of different tones so we get kind of just a lot of color going on. I'm not just looking to apply like a flat, fill color here. So I use alcohol markers very similarly to how I do digital art and how I think about watercolor art where I'm building up my color and I'm applying a lot of layers. And I applied this yellow green into the throat of the frog as well since that's something I noticed about the frog is that the green from the frog's face was kind of seeping into the throat. And since the throat itself has a lot of yellow going on, there's room for me to do this. So, so now I'm going in with some Prismacolors. I have some warmer yellows going on here. And that's one of the things I really like about Prismacolor is that they offer, in my opinion, better yellows, better natural yellows than Copic offers. Their blue greens are really, really nice and they have a really nice selection of purples. So that's one of the reasons I highly recommend that people not be brand specific. A lot of these brands do play well together, even though the official page will often say they don't. They're all alcohol based. They all have the same base component. Now there are some alcohol based markers like sharpies are technically alcohol based the chrome pins are technically alcohol based there are some alcohol solvent markers that don't play so well with like prismacolor and copic um, so I recommend you either watch videos of people who test out that kind of stuff which is something I've done on the channel or you do a little bit of testing yourself and figure out what you like and what works for you so I also used a little bit of that warm yellow in the eyes of the frog to create that golden sheen and now I'm going back in and adding more cream colors to the throat and kind of blending some of that yellow green that we applied. And when I'm working with alcohol markers, I will often work back and forth. Generally, I'm progressing from light to dark, but I'll often apply a darker color and then blend black back out with the lighter color. So um, I generally am not big on like marker papers, like the Express It blending card or some of the coated marker papers that can only take like three layers of marker because I like to do so many layers. So for me, when I'm using alcohol markers, Generally, I prefer to work on like a cellulose watercolor paper, which is gonna be very absorbent, but you're gonna get a lot of blending. Or I like to use bristles, like a plate bristle or a semi-smooth bristle. Or I like to use mixed media paper. Just any of those thicker papers that can take a lot of ink and can take a lot of work without getting torn up or without the colors just kind of sloughing off. So now I'm using one of the Shin Han yellow greens. It's a bit more blue than our initial yellow green. And you can tell this marker is starting to run a little bit dry because we're getting kind of a streaky effect, which kind of gives a dirty look to the frog. So after I apply this base coat, I put this marker away for later use or to refill it because I don't want to continue to use a marker that's going to be streaky because it's going to look very dirty.
And to kind of help mitigate that streaky look, I went back over it with our first color, that very light yellow green from Copic, just to kind of blend out the streakiness a little bit. So earlier I mentioned that Prismacolor has some really nice blue greens. So I went and reselected some colors and I picked out some greens that I felt might work with the frog a little bit better from my Prismacolor collection. I've also grabbed a couple of Copics just because they add more towards the darker green gamut. So one of the tricks with alcohol markers is just in general, you want to try and cover less with each layer of color. And that's going to help create kind of that chromatic color that we're looking for, that color intensity and that color depth. And it's also going to help create some contrast and some highlights. So you guys might have noticed that I didn't leave the white highlights on the paper. I just went ahead and filled in the whole thing. And that's because later on I'm going to go in with white gouache and I'm going to add specific highlights. And one of the reasons I do that is the same reason that people might use masking fluid when they're applying watercolor. It means I don't have to work around those areas. I don't have to think about trying to leave those areas white. And my color is going to end up a lot smoother. Because if you look at how the highlights are on the frog, if you think about it, the highlights are not in the skin of the frog. They're not a pigmentation difference. The highlights are light reflecting off of the mucus that the frog secretes. So the color of the frog is beneath the highlight. And that's why I want to apply a white highlight on top of it. So at this point, I'm working really closely with the reference to see how the greens are developing, what areas on the frog are a darker green that would imply that they're more in shadow, what areas of the frog are a lighter green which would imply that they're a highlight. And it's a lot of working back and forth between colors, applying a darker green, blending it out in some areas for a softer transition, a softer shadow, leaving some areas a little bit harsher so that it's more of a cast shadow. So now we have the majority of the frog's green skin colored. Now we're going to start working on those little toe pads. And if you guys remember the reference, those little toe pads are more of a mushroom brown kind of color. So we're going to start with some skin tones and kind of work our way darker from there.
And there's even a little bit of a pink tone to them. So I'm going in with like Copic Natural Lipstick just to add kind of that pinkish depth that I saw in the reference image. So that's about how much it bleeds through. It bleeds through to the back of the page, but it doesn't bleed onto the next page. So this is a fairly heavy paper. I don't mind marker papers that bleed through to the back of the paper, but I don't really like it when they bleed through onto the next page. And generally, I'll use a piece of cardstock in between my pages just to serve as like a catch-all so I don't ruin the next page. So to render the cast shadow, the shadow that's being cast by the frog's inflated throat onto the frog's stomach, I selected three blue-violet colors. These are cooler sort of grays, more towards purple than gray. And I went ahead in with the lightest one and I sketched in our shadow forms. And now I'm just kind of rendering them. So speaking from the voice of the future, I wish I'd kind of blended the shadow out just a little bit more because when I'm finished with the shadow, it's a little bit stronger than I really wanted it to be. And now I'm just going to kind of go in here and there and add some blue violet shadows. Not too many. I have a tendency to often overwork pieces and I mentioned this during the stream. So what I was trying to do for this was I was trying to stop myself before I hit that overworked zone because often I'll end up adding like another layer of shadows to create more depth. But what it ends up doing is it ends up neutralizing the vibrancy of the color and creating kind of like less contrast and we kind of start to lose something. So earlier in the video, I mentioned highlights. Here is the white gouache. I just applied some to my Teflon work surface, add a little bit of water, and then I use a really, really fine watercolor brush just to add a few white specular highlights here and there, like to the eyes and to the skin. Since frogs secrete mucus and they have smooth skin, it creates a very, very shiny, like gloss effect that I'm gonna use the white gouache to help capture. So we're just about finished with our frog. So if you guys enjoy live workshops, if you enjoy being able to ask 
questions in real time and get real time answers. If you're looking for a little bit of extra help and encouragement with your art, my streams are on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time and I cover all kinds of things. One week we did edigami flowers together. The next week we did a watercolor marker workshop. This week we did an alcohol marker workshop where we colored a frog. And I'm very open to suggestions from you guys about what we're gonna do the next week. I try to make start to finish projects that you guys can do along with me. So hopefully I'll see you guys in my next live stream. Have a wonderful day guys.